this video, we are going to take a look at problem 1.17 from Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics 3rd Edition. Uh, in this problem, we want to describe an unstable part particle that spontane spontaneously disintegrates with some lifetime, um, and so the probability of finding the particle is not going to be constant anymore. Uh, before, we said that this, this thing was equal to 1, but now we're saying it's e to the minus t over tau. And so you see if we plug in t equals 0, well, we get e to the 0, which is 1. So at t equals 0, there, the particle is obviously still there. But any time after 0, well, maybe it's not. And there's some probability that it's already disintegrated. And so one way that we can think about this, uh, if you go to the book, equation 1.24 assumes that v is real. But uh, you know, even though this leads to conservation of probability, we could assign an imaginary part this so, so it would be V equals V0, what we had before, minus I times this capital gamma. Gamma is a positive real constant, so we multiply a positive real constant by I. Okay. Show that we now get the time derivative of the probability is equal to minus 2 gamma over H bar times the probability. Okay, so... The probability as a function of time is defined as the integral minus infinity to infinity of psi of x comma t squared dx, which is equal to e to the minus t over tau. That's what we have. And then let's start where the problem actually tells us to start. It hints us to start at 1.24, which is d psi star by dt is equal to minus i h bar over 2m d squared psi star dx squared plus i over h bar v times psi star. And now we want to say, okay, this v is now defined as v0 minus i gamma. And that is no longer real. And so really, equation... Uh, 1.24 becomes, uh, it's going to become something different, becomes d psi star by dt is equal to i h bar minus i h bar over 2m d squared psi star by dx squared plus i over h bar. Everyone, everything looks the same so far, but we do v star psi star. We have to take the complex conjugate of V. And so then, as you follow along in the book, equation 1.25 becomes uh, d dt of psi squared is equal to i h bar over 2m uh, psi star d squared psi dx squared minus d squared psi star dx squared times psi. Uh, and this, so again, we're just following equation 1.25 in the book. So if you don't see it, you know, go to the book and, and, and refresh on what was going on. So this is equal to the partial with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to x of ih bar over 2m psi star d psi by dx minus d psi star by dx times psi. Uh, and But now we're going to have a new term plus the integral i over h bar psi squared v star minus v. And so, again, following along with the book, this goes to 0 as before, but we have this new term that we need to look at. So let's look at the new term, and that's the whole point of this problem. So we have i over h bar integral um, psi squared v star minus v. So let's do v star minus v. That's v0 uh, plus i gamma minus v0 plus i gamma. So we see that it's a plus i gamma both times because we did v star, so we switched the sign. And then minus v's, we switched the sign. Um, and that's how we end up with with that arrangement. So the V0s cancel, and then just distribute in the I. And sorry, before I get ahead of myself, we still have the integral here of um, psi squared dx. 
okay? And I should have written dx up there too. That's my mistake. So uh, now we're back on track. So we get integral psi squared dx. Um, this is important because this is how we define p. So we definitely need that. Uh, and so then, like I said, we're going to distribute in the i. We have 1 over h bar minus gamma minus gamma is, uh, and then times p. So that is equal to minus 2 gamma over h bar times p. So thus we found that dp by dt is equal to minus 2 gamma over h bar times p as we've been asked to do. So that is verified. Okay, and then we, we actually are asked to solve this equation. So solving um, uh, this equation, we will take dt to the right, take dt out there, and then take p and put it in the denominator on the left. So let's do that. Uh, we have 1 over p dp. These are capital P's. There, the probability is equal to integral, and then minus 2 gamma over h bar dt. Um, sorry, no integral yet, um, but that's obviously the point of what we're doing, so we're going to integrate both sides. Uh, integral 1 over p is going to be the, the log of p, so we have ln of big P is equal to minus 2 gamma t over h bar. That's a very easy one. And then we're just going to lump our constant all into the right-hand side. It's just a constant, so it doesn't matter anyway. Um, obviously, then we're just going to take the uh, exponential of both sides, or exponentiate both sides, and we get that p of t, uh, since t is our variable on the right-hand side, so p of t is equal to, okay, what's e to a constant? It's just going to be a constant um, value, so let's just call it p of 0. Right? It's not dependent on t, so, so in other words, when you plug in t equals 0, the e to the whatever, e to the 0, it just goes to 1, and so we're left with p of 0. So that's what we're going to call it p of 0, e to the minus 2 gamma t over h bar. And then, as we said, well, we're trying to find something of the form e to the minus t over tau, so therefore tau is defined as h bar over 2 gamma, and we can call this the lifespan, lifespan, lifetime of the particle. So there, therefore we have shown that we have found p of t equal to some, some constant p of 0, uh, e to the minus t over tau, write that cleaner, tau, where again tau is just our h bar over uh, 2 gamma.